Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. Happy Monday, indeed. And also, a couple shout-outs. It is Teacher Appreciation Week and also National Nurses Week. Very so nice. to all of the teachers and nurses yeah. out there, thank you, thank you, thank you. A thousand thank yous. Very important career fields. Absolutely. Always a demand for either one of those jobs. I know, I know. And for they're sure. tough, tough, tough. It is great to see you, by the way. You too. Yeah, I missed you this weekend. I know. We did our sep we went our separate ways this weekend. A separate thing. After the show on Friday, I jumped on a plane. You know my little nieces who have been here on Houston Life, they're four, six, eight, and ten. And the oldest three, they competed in the, their regional gymnastics so competition. So stinking cute. Yeah, I can't so even handle this. We were out in the Bay Area, and my gosh, they can do like 20 back handsprings in a row. After the competition, we went out to Half Moon Bay. Oh, beautiful. Which is so beautiful the wildflowers everywhere and you know it was a whirlwind weekend but it was so good to see my sister and her husband and their oh, girls that picture and uh, got back here late last night but so excited to come to work this morning wake up and see the Sun what a great weekend getaway a little family time and I know how much you love those adorable nieces so <laughs> it was super so good. fun well and sitting at dinner on Saturday night too they kept asking okay Uncle Derek tell us a story has anything ever gone wrong on your show Never. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. And I was like, how long you got? <laughs> I can write a book about all the things that happen behind the scenes. <laughs> and then, and, you know, sometimes segments don't, don't go Remember exactly the, as Remember the planned. chocolate mousse at the Galleria? Oh, I don't think our viewers know that. No, I know. The chocolate mousse, like, you know, we move all these set pieces around, right? And 20 seconds or 30 seconds before we went back from a, came back from a commercial break with this beautiful chef whipping up his chocolate mousse and kaput. It went all over the stage. We had no chocolate mousse to talk about. One of our staff members dropped it. And then, also, one of the issues is at the Galleria at the mall, our stage. <laughs> Our, our set that we use. Closed set. Uh, <laughs> that store that we used to work in <laughs> had a giant step up. So it was like this massive tripping hazard. And during commercial breaks, our poor staff members I know. would have to hoist these Table. So, like, during a cooking segment, you know, like, we're not cooking in a, in a kitchen at the gallery. It was like camping, only worse. What, what's worse than camping? <laughs> <laughs> Jail. <laughs> so, we would do these cooking segments. And, you know, we have so many amazing restaurants and chefs who come on Houston Life. But what would happen is they, they come early to the show to prep Prepping, all of their yeah. cooking segments. And at the gallery, we had these little tables that had to be lifted onto the, <laughs> the stage. stage. <laughs> so one day we were doing the scallops dish. Oh, do you remember that? I do remember that. We weren't doing this. This incredible chef was doing it. All these beautiful scallops, the freshest ingredients. It was all plated. Of that. Everything was plated. So during commercial break, Courtney and I run backstage to grab our note cards for the next segment, and all of a sudden, <laughs> we hear the crash of all crashes. It was epic, and we looked at each other. Do you remember that? I do, and I uh, remember. I was like, <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> and we went out, and there the scallops were on the ground. <laughs> Bad so times. yeah, no, things never go wrong here. <laughs> things never go wrong at the show. But my nieces had a good laugh. I mean, so cute. they They're laughed adorable. so hard they about fell out of their chairs. Oh my gosh, a such a fun time. time. And we didn't do too much over the weekend. Um, you know, we had baseball um, and a little uh, shout out to um, the Timber Grove Cardinals 11U. They start in the playoffs tonight. All so right. Connor starts first playoff game for that. Ooh, so. Congratulations, Connor. Very, very cool. And um, and then on um, yesterday, we went and saw the Avengers, the three-hour epic movie. I'm not going to spoil it for you, okay? But something funny happened in, in this, right? So it's three hours long. Connor went with his friend to see the movie. So it was just Orlando, AJ, and I. And there is a part in the movie, you know, I'm such a wimp. I, I, cr I cry at everything. You do? I do. I cry at, like, Dove Soap commercials. I'm really weird. Like, I get real touchy. I know. I know. It doesn't sound right. But it happens. Like, I, 
I cried at the fourth, at the fifth grade graduation ceremony last year. Oh. I didn't even know a kid in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just hear the music and I think about my own kids, and it's like yeah, this. Ever since you become, like, when you become a parent, I just feel like this, like the tear switch was flipped on for me because I never cried ever before. So um, I'm in this three-hour movie, and you're, you know, you're elbow, elbow to elbow. The movie theater was packed, and um, and I'm not going to spoil it. So. If, no, you know, if you haven't seen the movie yet, please go see it. It's very good. Is it? Um, but I cried, right? I was crying in the movie. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, don't wipe your face. Like, don't, because I didn't want anybody to see me, like, especially the person sitting next to me. So, so I'm just, was, like, streaming. So it was a silent cry, tears streaming <laughs> down. You streaming. weren't, like, shaking. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. But, that, you know, and then, like, it's dark and then it's light, depending on the scene. And, you know, and so... You could, if you were, if you were to look at me, you could tell that I was. I mean, they were coming down. They were dripping. I was catching them in my mouth, like the whole nine. And all you of were a sudden, catching I, them in your. You know mouth? what I mean? They were coming like down my face. No, but they were. I, you know, I, I like was a, crying. Like a frog. It was a good. It was a good <laughs> cry. And so I hear Orlando say something to to AJ, and I'm like, oh gosh, they know I'm crying. They know I'm crying, and I'm trying not to cry anymore. And AJ leans over to me. He's like, mom, mom. And I'm like. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> he's like, are you, are you crying? I was like, mm -hmm. he's like, that's okay. I dropped a tear too. <laughs> he told me, isn't that cute? He dropped a tear. Yeah, isn't that sweet? <laughs> but then I started laughing and then it's like the laugh cry weirdness that's happening at the same time. And I mean, I, at that point, then all bets were off. I mean, it, I never, I couldn't even look at the guy next to me because I'm sure, I, I mean, I was just mortified. Like, I think that he knew I was bawling my eyes it's out. Okay he wasn't. It's okay to cry in a movie. I know. It's okay to cry anytime. Sometimes I just hear the music. <laughs> like at the beginning? I don't know. Sometimes if I know like something's coming, you know? Huh. So like between the Avengers movie Game of Thrones last night, I can't handle any more tear, like any more crying. You cry during Game of Thrones? Oh, it was kind of emotional. That was an emotional, the end was emotional. I'm going to have to take your word for it. I mean, I, I cried this morning when I saw everyone on the news talking about that misplaced Starbucks cup. Isn't that the best? Did you even notice this? Didn't even notice. Like those people that notice that kind of thing. So I don't know if you guys did, but look at the table. This is like the celebration scene. Everybody's partying and doing their thing. And um, look at the, the, the table there. Like the far right of your screen. Like in, bottom in right. front of Khaleesi. So Danny, just, you, I think we should it's get a, a leftover a prop. Closer, closer look. It's just in case you guys can't see it. Yeah, I don't notice, notice anything there strange it is. about that scenario. <laughs> That looks totally normal. <laughs> and you know what? Are we really surprised that the actors in Game of Thrones are huge fans of Houston life? I mean, no surprise here, right? No. Amelia Clark and I, besties, I mean, come on. Yeah, it's a natural. Amelia, you're interviewing her this weekend, right? On Saturday, yes. Very, very cool. We got to remind people to send in their questions, Please right? do. And also, um, uh, Natalie Emanuel is going to be there as well. Her trusted advisor, Nisandi, is going to be there as well. This is for Comic Palooza. So submit your questions. I'm going to be I'm doing the moderating panel um, happening at Comic Palooza. Palooza on Saturday. This is happening at 11 o'clock in the morning. And um, submit a question on Facebook or Instagram, and you never know, I might ask your question. So it'll be pretty amazing. Are you going to dress up in like a special outfit for this? Not a costume, but I do have a little special something that I'm working on for Ooh, Saturday. That's a good tease. Yeah, yeah, I'm very excited. Well, I'm glad to have you back. You too. And we have so much to talk about on today's show, uh, including Melanoma Monday. Yes. I can't believe we didn't chat about this yet, but over the last couple of weeks, you and I have talked about this several times. I had a couple of moles removed yes. from my back, and it's something that we should all be checking for, suspicious moles. You know, melanoma is a serious, serious thing, and when you think about the statistics or you read about the statistics, so many people die from melanoma, and it is unnecessary because if you catch it early it is totally treatable absolutely and we're also going to talk about the five ways to reduce your skin cancer risk um, also surprising areas where melanoma may be lurking and also a partner check because it's very important to notice and keep an eye on those moles right yeah and don't be shy folks I mean in this melanoma it can be between your toes it can be on the bottom ears. of your foot your ears yeah even you know the other areas where the Sun don't shine Literally. or so they say Literally.
for some. Unless, well, on some beaches, I guess. Yeah. That's allowed. Um, okay, also, when it comes to skin health, you know, there is this rumor that by using bright, uh, vitamin C, you can brighten your skin. And Dr. Ingraham, she's also going to chat about that, ways we can add vitamin C into our beauty routine, brighten the skin, have that healthy glow. And the great thing about vitamin C is it's inexpensive, it's, it's easily accessible. We can all find it. Absolutely. Okay, but first, guys, cheers to Monday. We're sipping on some Pinot Noir from one of the most popular wine labels. Coming up on Houston Life, we're going to introduce you to the female winemaker from Duckhorn. If you are a wine drinker, you've probably seen the Duckhorn label. It's been around for 40 years. They started with Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, and now they have several labels and varieties. And recently, I sat down with the winemaker to talk about females in the business and tasting some really great Pinot Noirs. Okay, Dana, by far, you have one of the coolest titles, job titles, I think I've ever heard of, winemaker. Yay. I love it. How cool. Thank what you. a great job you have. I do. I love it. <laughs> um, so you've been in the in the industry for 14, 15 years yes. in the wine industry. Typically when you started though, it was kind of a heavily male dominated field, right? Most definitely. Yes. So I've been in the industry 15 years. Uh, when I started, I started as a viticulture technician and I was one the only female and there were probably 300 males in my department. So definitely male dominated in that sense. Um, but I'm seeing a big shift, which is great. This is by far one of my favorite brands um, that you represent. And I'm a huge fan of the Duckhorn family. Um, and I see your first bottle is Decoy. For everybody yeah. watching this, explain sort of the labels, because it all kind of flows together, right? Yes. And within Duckhorn portfolio, we, we're definitely becoming a Pinot Force. So it's really nice to make sure that um, everyone understands the main differences. There's um, textural differences, appellation differences, um, and I can go through each one and we can kind of discuss what those are. So the first wine is Decoy. So this is our, our flagship wine within the company. So this is what you're going to see um, when you're out at your local grocery. This would be the most common okay. in the market. Um, I started working for Duckhorn Portfolio five years ago and was the winemaker for Decoy at that time. This is Sonoma County Appellated, and so it really encapsulates all of what Sonoma County is. Okay, I'm going to taste it. You tell yes. me why this is so popular, why this Pinot is so great. Okay, and I'll taste it too. Mm -hmm. Oh, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Can't forget that. Very nice. So when I describe Pinot, I describe nice acid balance, mm -hmm. really refined, supple, soft, elegant tannin. For me, I love Pinot Noir because it's very food friendly, mm -hmm. it has really nice acid balance, and it's just really elegant. So if you're getting home from work, it's just a nice glass to have if you don't want to have a white wine. You can easily go to a Pinot, and it doesn't need that food to complement and blend out that kind of more tannic Not structure. heavy at all. Not I don't heavy. know if that is a true right. winemaker phrase, but not heavy at all. It's a very right. nice, light, elegant. Of, on the Yeah, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. With migration, I tend to get a lot of raspberry blue fruits um, and a little heavier texture than, than decoy, but nothing too or aggressive. Okay. So, All right, let's give this taste. one a try. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Totally different. Again, if, if most people maybe tend to not go for a red, oh, mm -hmm. I don't like a heavy red, or that's too bold for me. Mm -hmm. Pinot Noir really has that really nice balance right. of being able to enjoy a red but not have that heavy right. back to it. I love them both. They're sort of like my children. Yeah. I can't love them <laughs> one over the other, but now yeah. I'm going to mix in a third. What's yes. the third one we have? OK, so now we are moving to the Anderson Valley. GoldenEye was founded in 1996 by the duck horns. There's gonna be more structure, more earthiness, 
more texture here. So we're gonna taste, and what's the best way? We need to swirl first, right? I, I always swirl first just to coat the glass to get the full aromatic expression coming okay. through the glass. Okay, and then a little smell. Yes, okay. and then a little, maybe more swirling. More swirl. <laughs> it's all in the wrist. It's all in the wrist. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's bold. It's beautiful. Bold. But bold but light. Is that a thing? I don't even know. Bold and elegant. Bold and elegant. <laughs> I love it. But rustic. That's very nice. As well. Dana, I want to come to your Pinot Noir school every day. Good. <laughs> come on. Yeah, come up to Napa. <laughs> this is very You're wonderful. welcome anytime. Thanks so much for the intro to Pinot Noir. And I feel like knowing now the labels mm -hmm. and what to look for and just the sheer tasting, mm -hmm. what a fun way to do this with friends too. Getting yes. a couple of these bottles and sitting down and taking this nugget of information. I would I definitely it. recommend it. Yes, it's a fun, fun experience. And all of our wines are so different that really you can have like a full range and I think can satisfy a lot of palates you know, with different, everyone has their subjective style and it's fun to try and see what people prefer. Why do you think Pinot is catching on so so wildly right now? I, I think it's, it's easy to drink, it's supple, it's um, very, very food friendly, um, and each wine is so representative of its sense of place that it's really fun to try new wines because right. you're thinking, oh, there's this new appellation that I've heard of. I really want to try a wine from that specific appellation to see what that soil and topography and, um, you know, elevation does to the fruit. And I think Pinot is such a delicate varietal that it really can change the style of the wine depending on where it's from. Well, cheers to Pinot. Yeah, cheers, cheers to you, Dana. Thanks so much for yes. the introduction. I appreciate yes. it. Yes, yeah, thank you. Such a fun piece, and of course, uh, that is out of the Napa Sonoma area of California. We were not there doing the story, unfortunately. Oh, man. But um, you know, according to Dana, the the barrel aging for a Pinot Noir is anywhere from 10 months to 16 months. Some are 24 months. And again, mm. it really depends on um, the soil type and the climate, topography, where you are, and that's where you're going to get the difference in the Pinot Noirs. And those that we tasted there was so different. Very unique, but very easily easy on the palate. A fun assignment. Swirl yeah. and sniff. Yes, and then drink. Yeah. For more information, by the way, on Duckhorn Wines, just visit HoustonLife.tv. All right. Still to come on today's show, how about brightening your beauty routine? How adding vitamin C can help you love the skin you're in. And after the break, I look at the stock market. Year to date, it's up about 15%. So what does that mean for your finances? Our financial experts going to break it all down in the Shakiba Report up next. stock market lately do not worry our next guest is here to break down all the numbers and the rise in them year to date for 2019 here with all the details is private wealth advisor with Ameriprise Financial Trevor Shakiba welcome back happy Monday yeah you too okay let's start from at the top year to date we are the the market is up about 15 percent right yeah it's been a great year so far especially coming off last year where we ended the year negative we actually went into a bear market briefly which means the dow was down 20 percent or more and so this has been a great start I, I i was ready to come on and then all of a sudden the market actually today was down quite a bit although it's turned as you can see so it's been a great start, and a lot of that is due to uncertainty no longer being there. So if you remember in the fourth quarter, we had three things. Government shutdown, which is gone. Uh, China, which has reared its ugly head again here. There's some uncertainty now. But also the big one is interest rates at the end of fourth quarter. They've, they've come out and said they're going to pause on that. So when uncertainty goes away, the market stabilizes, and we've had a really, really good start to the year. Some people, Trevor, may try to time the market, essentially to jump in and out and say, oh, well, I've made all this money, so now I'm going to jump out, and then I'll get back in when things go down. You say that's never a winning strategy because the bottom line is nobody is psychic. Correct. No one has a crystal ball. So market timing, what you're talking about there, jumping in and out is... That is a loser's game. In fact, it's, it's actually closer to gambling. It's, it's not a coherent long-term investment strategy. So don't be jumping in, jumping out, or reacting emotionally. Just like today, we started off very, very uh, bad, but it started to come back. So we, we, you just can't predict 
the ins and the outs of the market. And quite honestly, I mean, if we listen to anything that you say, you're always saying, stay the course, just let it ride out. And that's basically what the stock market is, right? I mean, e right. you have to handle the good with the bad. Right, well, and the other way to look at it is if there wasn't volatility, you wouldn't be able to achieve market-like returns, whether that's 8% or 9% long-term. You're not gonna find a CD right now that's paying any more than maybe two or two and a half percent because it doesn't have any ups and downs. There's no volatility. So keep that in mind. Like most things in life, going in with the right expectations is, is key. We're going to have ups and downs. Every year on, on average, we've had a pullback of 10% or more going back to 1980. So when that happens, like it did last year in the fourth quarter, it's not time to panic. Stay the course and be focused on what you can control, which is your, your long-term financial goals. So if someone out there is saying, okay, well, I'm just going to cash out anyway as long as it's volatile and I'm just going to wait for things to settle down, you would say absolutely do not follow that line of thinking. Yes, don't ever listen to that person ever again <laughs> on anything. Now, look, I get it because money is emotional. Right. And so when that happens, it, it can really affect you. But remember, when you do that, it's, it's not I'm just going to get out. But when do you get back in? So you have to get two things exactly right. Yeah. You look back at the fourth quarter, how quickly did we stabilize and recover? So if you would have got out when the market was down in the fourth quarter in December, you probably would have missed a lot of this recovery. And now what do you do? Do you get back in? Do you wait? It, it's, and that's not the game you want to be playing. No, because that, that's a volatile game anyway. Yes. So, let, But if we do have cash or we came into cash or we got out, when, when do we get back in? Well, what I like to say is, is if you have cash, invest it, right? Because uh, remember, a third of your return, depending on your portfolio, is going to come from your dividends. So if you're not invested, you're definitely not getting dividends. But if you come into a large amount of money, whether that's retirement or whatever, an inheritance, and you don't want to just plop it all in, which is a, a, good, a good strategy, maybe invest a portion and then put in a, a certain amount or dollar cost average every month and that would spread your risk out over time. Is it true, Trevor, that people who are just <laughs> optimistic are more likely to be financially successful? Yes, it is. And um, actually, a study just came out from Frost Bank, which is really, really intriguing. But it shows, it documents a link between optimism and financial health or achieving your financial goals. Plus, if you look at history, how can you not be optimistic when you look at medical advances, technology, 3D printing, cloud computing? These types of things point to, to optimism. And so it's important to be optimistic. There's no evidence to the contrary to be any other, especially in the U.S. economy, in the market. And I'm always preaching that to clients. We're going to have ups and downs, mm -hmm. but stay focused and look back at history because that's your best guide moving forward. And as you've pointed out many times before, Trevor, market gains decade by decade average out to be about 10%, right? Yeah, depending on your time frame, if you stay the course with a long enough time frame, you will be able to see those market-like returns unless you react emotionally, which is what most people do, and then that's going to negatively affect your overall return. What about people who cry in movies? Um, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding, Trevor. Great to see you. As always, if you would like more information on financial planning or to schedule a complimentary initial consultation with Trevor and the Shakiba Group, you can call 281-724-9917 or visit them online, theshakibagroup.com. Trevor, thanks again. Yeah, thank you. Great to see you. Up next, don't go anywhere. We are sharing some of the items we are obsessed with, how you can get your hands on some of our favorite products. And by the way, coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, your guide to good pop Posture, easy exercises to help you strengthen your back so we can all stop slouching, oh, guys. Sit it's up not straight for you. Sit up straight. We'll be right back. Okay, shifting gears now. It is that time again. Courtney and I love to share some of our favorite items and strategies. And today, I think we're going to share some of not only our favorite items, but also some money-saving tips. I've got oh, a great one. I love it. Okay, we are sharing some of our favorite things and personal items we are obsessed with. Derek, you get to go first. Okay, perfect. I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with this, too. Well, this is a great one, and the whole reason I know about this is from our show, Perry Botanicals, started by Elizabeth Perry. So these are totally chemical-free, 100% natural, and it is skin cream, eye balm, uh, chapstick, 
And this is something called nature's facelift, folks. Okay, so this is not like a super money-saving tip, but I will tell you, it is less than what you would pay at a department store. And it's good for you. Yeah, and the great thing is, as we said, there are no chemicals. So right. oftentimes with lotion, our skin is our biggest organ, right? And we Absorbs. are soaking up all kinds of chemicals and parabens and synthetic fragrance and all of that. This has none of that. And in fact, it is chemotherapy and radiation safe. Yes. So if you know someone or or you yourself have been through cancer treatment, this stuff is totally great. Uh, you can see on your screen, the eye balm uses plant stem cells from Paris. That's pretty awesome. And uh, this little magical facelift, it's called like squalane oil, I believe. Am I pronouncing yes, that correctly? Yes, I believe so. And it's cold pressed from Italy. So Elizabeth started this business mixing eye creams and hand creams and face creams just in her own uh, KitchenAid mixer. And now she's expanded to this whole line of stuff, including lip well, gloss. Her lip glosses lip liner. are amazing. They're not super sticky and um, they are a true gloss um, and beautiful colors. And you don't have to worry about putting any kind of harmful chemicals yeah. on, on your body and then eventually in it, right? Because it yeah. does get absorbed, but it's really great. And quite honestly, I mean, it's shopping local. So that's what that's I love true. as well. Yeah. Good All stuff. natural, chemical I love free. It. Okay, you've okay. got a beauty tip. I do have a beauty tip. So sometimes I've had a lot of people ask me about where I get my eyelash extensions. And, they're not um, extensions. They're not <laughs> extensions. But I, I did do that for a while. This was a couple years ago. I just don't have the time for it. So, I mean, it, you know, for people that can and do it, that's great. Because you have to sit there for a mummy, like, like Yeah, mummy for a long for time. And between the nails and the other the hair and everything else, I had to weed it out. So um, I discovered um, ba Babe Lash, which is essential serum. I actually use the Duo. I found this at my favorite place, the Anti-Aging Institute oh. over on the Southwest Freeway. Yeah. Um, it's 65 dollars for a single it's 110 for the duo here's the thing the the gold you're going to put use at night and the silver you're going to use during the day i'm going to um tell my director i'm going to uh pick this up i'm going to pick up the gold one so if you can come back to me um it basically ladies and guys if you need uh want to grow your eyelashes what? by the way you could also use this on your brows it makes it's them great. grow it's great for eyelashes and brows and you just use this little tip Right here, the um, I'm going to put that. You can see it's just a little tiny brush. It's like an eyeliner brush. You go from like corner to corner on your eye, like you close it. So I'm going to move it again. There we go. And you're just going to kind of like do that. So on a clean face, you're just going to rub there and make a line this way and go to bed. And that's it. One little strip. And then the morning, you're going to do that one. Sometimes I forget about it. I'll be honest with you. They say it's a three-month supply, enhances lashes as little as four weeks with full results in 12 weeks. You're kidding. You swipe on both eyes, go to bed at night, do that in the morning. I got to tell you, $110 for a three. I'm going to say it's longer than a three-month supply. I really believe that. And lashes for days. Yeah, and it's crazy. They lashes. really did grow, and it's unbelievable. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, my next one. How about a passport photo, folks, for 18 cents? You can totally do Score. it. So you know when you go get a driver license photo or a passport photo and they sit you down and they snap one picture and, and it's bad done. and it's 20 bucks? That's a weird eye I'm going to show you going. how to do it. Let's put up a picture. Uh, I, I just had a photo uh, taken. Elizabeth, one of our makeup artists, took this photo of me in front of a white background. And you can see how my head is right in the middle of the frame. Be sure to look up passport photo requirements online because your final head size needs to be about an inch to an inch and three-eighths of an inch. Anyway, go to oddprints.com, upload your photo, and what they're gonna do is print out your passport photo on a regular four by six photo that you could print up at CVS, Walgreens, Costco. It's like 23 cents at Walgreens, 18 cents at Costco. But folks, there's your passport photo. I love and it. And I know this because I just did it and I renewed my passport and I got my new passport. Oddprints.com doesn't cost you anything. You upload the photo, you crop it, you download it, and then send it to your local Boom. pharmacy. I love that. Okay, center. I've got my last one that I'm obsessed with here. It's a blush, and it's by um, Milani. And these are only three of the colors. There's actually 12 shades available. It's $7.99. Awesome. You can get it at Amazon. You can get it at Target, Walgreens. Doesn't matter. What I love about this, it also has kind of like a shimmer, so almost like a bronzy yeah. and a highlighter mixed in to these shades. It's very user friendly. And I'm just gonna hold this one up so hold people that can up. see that sort of marbled look to it. Yeah, I'm oh, gonna pretty. grab this one because in here, 
comes your little brush. It comes with a brush for $7.99, and literally, it's the shape that you want for like your highlighting. You don't go any higher or lower than your cheekbone. It's fantastic. Literally, I think I have eight shades. I wear it all the time. And that is a fantastic tip on this Melanoma Monday. Yes. Stay out of the sun, folks, and just use the bronzer. Good job, Courtney. Of course. Thank you. I love all your stuff, too. And we will post this online as well. So uh, visit our website, HoustonLife.tv, uh, to find a link where you can grab the items. Okay, guys. Up next, five ways to reduce your skin cancer risk. We're going to be right back with all the details. May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, and today is Melanoma Monday. It is a serious topic, folks, and board-certified dermatologist Dr. Sh Dr. Sherry Ingerham is here with five ways we can all reduce our risk. Welcome back yes, to the show. thank you for having me. Okay, so this is serious business because when you look at the stats, a lot more people are affected by melanoma, and it is deadly. It is deadly, but if caught early, it can be life-saving. You know, one in five Americans will develop skin cancer in their lifetime, but the wonderful thing is we can see it, we can spot it, and we can stop it. That's one thing that we need to talk about today, the five ways that we can reduce our chance of getting skin cancer. Absolutely. And part of that is the first thing that we think of, I think, is sunscreen. Right. right? Think of the S's. Think of shade. Seek shade. Bright times, 10 to 4, and then look for sunscreen. You want a shot glass size. People don't realize they don't apply. Studies show they apply half the amount they need. You need a one ounce shot glass yeah. size put for on the your body. Own. For the body. Now, every day before you leave your house, put SPF 30 on your face. That is the most important thing. You know, obviously brush your teeth, comb your hair, put your sunscreen on. If you're going to go be in the water, you know, you want to do it about 30 minutes before you go out to the beach. But the neat thing is there are products for everyone, every type of skin. There are sprays, there are powders, which we love. So I always say, put your cream on in the morning, but throughout the day for ease, reapply every two hours when you're out in the sun, and you can reapply with a spray or a powder. And this powder is so fantastic. You showed us this before, but men and, and women can use this Absolutely. product. Absolutely. Men love this powder. You keep it in your pocket. You're out on a boat. You just reapply it. It stays on beautifully. It matches your skin. It doesn't really give you a color, or it can give you coverage if you want. Or out okay. on the golf course as well. I, I think they're all great products. These are all great things to just touch up to for your makeup, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay. Double duty, double SPF duty. SPF 30 is minimum. SPF 30 face. is minimum. You always want to do a 30. Anything less is just not effective. But remember, we don't apply enough. So the higher the SPF, the better, because that makes up that gap because we don't put enough on. What about, we're now seeing the 90s and the 100s. Right. Is that effective too? Yes. So what I tell people is you don't need to buy a 100. You can buy a 30 and put on a good, nice coating. But if you're one of those people who doesn't apply enough, you may want to buy the 100 okay. because you don't have to be perhaps as religious about it. Now, for men, I love sun shirts and I love supplements. HelioCare is a wonderful vitamin. It's a Honduran fern leaf extract, polypodium leucotomos. And studies show it's a very powerful anti-agent antioxidant, but it actually helps our skin fight UV damage. So a lot of my male patients, my golfers, my tennis players, my boaters, yeah. my hunters, they love taking this pill every day. I say take one every day. If you're going to be out in the sun a little longer, perhaps on vacation, take two a day. Men love these sunscreen deodorant sticks too, and we're going to display that on our model in a moment. So speaking of models, what we're going to talk about are sunscreen clothes. So I'm going to show you on our models what we typically do. So Jennifer, our first model, is wearing one of my favorite products. These are Coolabar sleeves and gloves. You can get these online from Coolabar. They are fantastic. You know, you're a mom, your kids are or a softball game, it's hot outside, you just pull these up, you're driving in your car, you don't want brown spots on your hands, yes. keep these in the glove compartment. That is a favorite trick of dermatologists. Awesome. And then a good broad rimmed hat. So we love these for women. For daughters, for sons, you want to wear a sun shirt, start them young. Right. That is the most important thing. So Eden here, our model, is wearing a wonderful bathing suit from J. Crew, and it's her favorite bathing suit because oh. she doesn't have to reapply sunscreen, you don't have to chase her around, but what Eden likes to do is put her own sunscreen on and I recommend these deodorant sticks from Neutrogena all the time and she's got one there I have one here men love these things I tell them keep it in your bag yeah. and reapply it during the day and so super easy. easy for them Soup to do it kids do it themselves What's the smell like not oh, bad at not all. Not bad at all. And a little trick on your hands, mm, if you're yeah. prone to brown spots, put it on your hands in the morning. It's tough to wash off when you're driving. If you don't have the gloves, it's great. For other individuals, I say keep a hat in your car. So many sunscreens I catch on the scalp, especially if you're blonde or you're starting to thin. 
wear a good hat. Now, if you're a man and you have short hair, yeah. you want a hat with flaps in the back, okay. okay? These are great as well. The best thing you can do is just think about covering up. For babies, six months and under, you can't use sunscreen. Right. So you've got to keep them covered in the shade. After six months, they can wear sunscreen. But for us, reapplying every two hours doesn't always work. So taking the Helio Care can take the edge off. It builds up in your system, gives you protection. Wearing sun protective clothing, you're stacking the odds in your favor. What about the ears? Because this is an area that's exposed. I know, Jennifer, you had on this wide-brimmed hat. Right. But this, Dr. Ingraham, is an area that especially men are vulnerable. So true. I find more skin cancers in men's temples and their ears in the backs of their necks. So what you want to do, of course, is go to a board-certified dermatologist once a year, get a full-body exam, and let us look through your scalp. Have your hairdresser look. Look for the five important things, you know, the A, B, Cs, Ds, and Es. You look for asymmetry. Look for border changes, look for color changes, diameter changes, and the evolution of a, a lesion. These are all hints that something can be transitioning to a skin cancer. And do a skin self-exam on yourself or have a loved one. I always say wives save lives, but husbands do too. So you want to look for spots on yourself. You know, get a chair, get a mirror, and look in places you don't normally see. Have your, your boyfriend, your partner look at you in places you can't see yourself. And then once a year, go to the dermatologist. But what you were mentioning is really important. Today I saw a patient actually on the back of the neck and I told him, you're doing such a good job putting sunscreen on the back of your neck because most men forget and that's right. why those hats with the flaps are great and the ears is a really big issue. So baseball caps are great, but if you can wear a, a broad rim hat when you're out really, you know, on a boat or golfing, you're going to get better protection. Yeah. And again, when you are doing that that body check, you are looking for the color, you're looking for the shape. Those are kind of the two. Right. It's the A, the asymmetry, the border is, is really the border being really the C is the color. Variations in color. You don't want variations in color. Diameter. You don't want it enlarging in evolution. Like you said, if you said, you know, I have this one small little brown spot and it started to enlarge and change looking different yeah. anything that just you don't feel like it used to look and remember skin cancer can develop in new lesions de novo but it can also develop in a birthmark or something you've had for years that right. suddenly changes that's the e for evolution get it checked and between I, the toes and bottom of the feet by absolutely the way, right? yeah. i mean we find things on ears i found them inside the nose and often on the bottom of the feet so really places you don't think the sun shines do get skin cancer especially melanoma and always great information dr ingerham she's going to stick around after the break we are talking vitamin c and the benefits of adding it to our daily routine. Thanks to our lovely models, Eden and Jennifer. I love that swimsuit, by the way. By the way, if you aren't following Houston Life on Instagram, what are you waiting for, folks? There you can find behind-the-scenes videos, so much more. Just search Houston Life TV. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back with board certified dermatologist, Dr. Sherry Ingraham. All right, and you can see all of the fruits and vegetables on our set now. So vitamin C, we think about vitamin C, doctor, as an immunity booster, but you say it also can help our skin. Right, you know, we've for years said, okay, it'll prevent a cold. Now we know it may even lower your blood pressure, but really the beauty is what it does for beauty. It's incredible for your skin. It's a building block of collagen, but also it helps to fade brown spots. It helps to stimulate new collagen, fine lines and wrinkles and is a huge brightener for the skin. So huh. I'm a fan of using this in my skincare products, but we have fruits and vegetables out here. You say eating it is going to help yes. you as well. You want to do both. Obviously, vitamin C helps your blood vessels. It helps internal structures as well. It's a very important antioxidant our bodies cannot make. And people think, well, I have to eat only citrus fruit. What they don't realize is a cup of strawberries has as much vitamin C as an orange. Getting a lemon, squeezing it into every drink is incredibly helpful. If you drink green tea, the mm -hmm. polyphenols, the EGCG you want out of that, much more intensively absorbed if you squeeze lemon in it when you drink You're it. You're kidding. I you love need a it. Broccoli, full of vitamin C, and kiwi is incredible. Kiwi is packed with vitamin C, and there's actually data coming out showing how much it helps general health in men they did a study. Broccoli, Wonderful. vitamin C, and protein, as we learned yes, last week's show. Yes, and great antioxidant. Broccoli's so But what I tell people is when you eat it, you're really nurturing your body, but the skin is the furthest leaf on the tree, right? The right. skin gets it last. So if you can apply it directly on the skin as well, you're really going to help yourself. Well, let's talk about some of these products here. I think sure. this is one that I'm familiar with. I think I use this one. This is just a topical 
pure like vitamin pure C. Pure L-ascorbic acid. And really, those are the most important things you want to know when you're looking for vitamin C in a product. Most over-the-counter products, vitamin C is a preservative. So it'll say vitamin C in the label, but it's actually not actively absorbed in the skin and bioactive in the skin once it's absorbed. You want it to be pure L-ascorbic acid, which is what SkinCeuticals really patented in their products. You want it to be in a serum form at an acidic pH so it's absorbed, and it needs to be in the right percentage, which is 10 to 20 percent. Most products over-the-counter don't have that, so you really need to look for a serum with those three things, and that's why I'm a huge fan of CE Ferulic, this specific product, because you can put it on every morning. Men, I have found, will use this product. You want to always go thinnest to thickest, so when you wake up in the morning, before you put your sunscreen on, you want to realize that sunscreen doesn't block everything, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't block free radical damage to the degree we need it. What vitamin C does is it sops up free radicals, which are coming from pollution and the sun, and they're wreaking havoc in our skin. And so it kind of, what I say, sops up these ping pong balls and is an environmental shield. So you want to put this on first thing and then put your sunscreen on top in the morning. Okay, and using that though is also a good sprightener and does it even out the skin tone as well? It can. It okay. can brighten you. It can help dull spots fade. It can brighten you. It can stimulate new collagen, but it also protects from DNA damage. Ooh. It can also protect from some of the damage that the environment is basically doing every day when we step outside. So there's intrinsic aging it helps with as well as extrinsic aging. So the new thought is really that environmental shield against not only UVA and UVB, but pollution and ozone as well. Okay. And just to confirm that I understand, you said from thinnest to thickest. You mean just like the, the lotions. Uh, the the lotions. products. Yeah. yeah. So you always want to do a serum first, and then you want to put on your lotion, and then you want to put on your powder. Because people today have so many products. And I always say, Lots keep of it steps. simple. <laughs> keep it simple, but always thinnest to thickest. And this is your. I always call it liquid gold. This is your powerhouse. You want to absorb that first. You want that to be the first thing that goes on your skin. And that's day and night? Day and okay. night. Now, if you're like most of my patients and you can only get it on once, do it in the morning as part of your environmental shield. But if you can do it at night under your evening product, perhaps use a retinoid or a nice barrier product, do it in the evening as well. Okay. And what is this one? This is another product I love. These are real greens in a little capsule. It's a, almost like a little dissolvable pellet. And I tell people, drink this once a day. It's really a day's worth of greens. It's kale compressed. It's oranges. Huge amounts of vitamin B, vitamin C, and they're fizzy and taste great. I tried to get my kids to drink them, and we're not there yet, but okay. I drink them every day. <laughs> I appreciate the honesty. But you can get these at Nordstrom as well as online. Whole Foods has their own brand, but these are a great way to sneak. If you don't like eating all these fruits and vegetables, I always say people ask me, should I juice? Should I do this? Raw is always best for most things, okay? And then Whole Foods are always best. But we can't always get that into our busy right. lives. So then if you have to juice or you have to take a little pellet in water, do that next. But raw is always best. And they really do taste good? I love them. I'll leave you with some. I like them. It, you know, it's an acquired taste sometimes. But you know what? If you don't like drinking a kale shot, which some people don't, this is a kale shot that tastes like lemonade. Okay, well, we'll try I anything no here. And also, I know the uh, the vitamin C fruits and vegetables that you pointed out earlier. These are maybe the more obvious choices, but even things like tomatoes and potatoes. Contain yes, potatoes, high tomatoes, and you know, peppers are a great source. Like sweet red peppers are awesome. Green peppers. It's those colorful foods. You're looking for brightly hued, brightly colored foods because that's what protects those foods from the environment, and that's what protects you from the environment too. Those bright colors, all of those healthy vitamins are infused in. But remember, people ask me all the time, you know, what about a grapefruit versus an orange? Eat what you love. Right. You know, find something you like and do it every day. So if you can give your kid one of those cute little clementines and yeah. have them peel it and eat it every day in their lunch, that's a great way. Supplements. People ask me a lot about vitamin C supplements. Again, try and eat it whole. But if you want to take vitamin C supplements, do it. Don't take more than 2,000 milligrams a day. Right. If you smoke, if you have health problems, always take a little bit more than the average person. But more than 2,000 milligrams a day can cause a little GI upset. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Ingerham. I've got my C hat on for protection. We'll be right back. It's great to see you. Yeah. You always have such great information. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, remember the time the scallops crashed? Well, luckily, Mark Burrell was watching from Rainbow Lodge, and he has a photo from that fun Because he lived it memory. along with us from Rainbow Lodge. That was who was on set with us. Those were his scallops. That was his photo. He captured the madness. Forgive us, Mark. <laughs> we'll see you guys Happy tomorrow. Monday. <laughs>